Hello. I would like to take a few minutes to discuss a serious issue that has been festering in Southeast Michigan for the last two decades, unfair water rates. My name is Bob Cushman and I'm a resident of Northville Township. I have a degree in mechanical engineering from Purdue and I've worked in engineering, sales engineering, and aviation for more than 40 years. I'm going to show that the Detroit Water Department has been unfairly structuring its water rates for quite some time explain how the newly formed Great Lakes Water Authority will be unable to provide a fair and homogeneous water rate structure, provide an actual solution to this problem affecting 40% of the population of Michigan, and tell you what you can do to help. To begin to talk about water distribution, we need to think of the Detroit water system as a pyramid with three levels. The top level is the Detroit Water and Sewer Department, the middle level is comprised of 83 cities and towns, and the bottom level is comprised of 4 million citizens receiving that water. It is important to make this distinction because the interaction between the Detroit Water and Sewer Department and the 83 cities and towns is the focal point of this discussion. The water bills that you as citizens receive are a result of the interaction, but an apples to apples comparison is not possible at the local level. There are 82 communities that buy water from Detroit Water Department and resell it to the residential customers. Detroit sells water to its citizens at a retail rate. Also, please note that Detroit itself was not included in the comparison of the 82 as it only publishes a retail rate and the suburbs are charged a wholesale rate. This is a listing of some of the highest and lowest cost communities. The lowest cost community pays $2.75 per 1,000 cubic feet with many communities on the east side of town paying between four and seven dollars per unit volume of water. Perhaps your community is up on the screen. The middle value, also known as the median, is nine dollars and sixty-six cents per unit volume of water. The numbers were taken directly from the 2014-2015 wholesale suburban water rate schedule provided by the Detroit Water and Sewer Department on its own website. I begin my study by conducting a comparative analysis of water departments in the Great Lakes region that had data available online. The water departments in Cleveland, Grand Rapids, and Milwaukee provided data that could be used in an apples-to-apples -apples comparison with Detroit. One of the first characteristics of our comparative analysis that became apparent was the overall complexity of the Detroit rate structure as compared to the other three water departments. Detroit has 83 water rate zones as compared with two, four, or six for the other city water regions. Keep this complexity difference in mind as we will refer to it later. The next major difference was the extreme bandwidth of the rates. In order to continue an apples to apples comparison, I opted to use a ratio of the highest cost water rate zone to the lowest water rate zone. The result was that instead of only having a maximum of 30% or 60% or 80% more for the most expensive rate zone. Detroit had a water rate zone that was 900% more than the cheapest water zone. I should point out that all persons associated with structuring water rates seem to agree that the farther from the source of the water and the higher above the source of the water that a community is, the greater the cost should be. However, in this case, the devil is in the details. It would seem that Detroit has taken a generally accepted truism and distorted it to great lengths. This has resulted in some communities paying far more than their fair share. In order to better graphically represent the disparity in the super wide rate structure of Detroit, I used this Excel graphing tool in an attempt to make this disparity easier to visualize. The vertical range shows the significant difference between an 80% zone in Cleveland and a 900% zone in Detroit. In the case of Detroit, we can make a qualitative statement that communities to the left of the center line are paying far more than their fair share, while communities to the right of the vertical line are paying far less than their fair share. This is the essence of the unfair water rate structure in Southeast Michigan. 
I rearranged the 82 communities in order of the cost of water and added a column to compare the cost of water versus the per capita income as reported by that community in the 2010 census. I found a fairly good correlation between per capita income of that community and the amount that the Detroit Water Department charges that community. While this is not proof positive that the per capita income was the basis of the cost of water, it does give a casual observer reason to pause and wonder. The Great Lakes Water Authority was finalized in June of 2015 and has a voting structure of six votes. Detroit has two votes, the governor office has one vote, and each of the three counties have one vote. Think of a magnetic compass rose. Then think about competing interests where Brooks Patterson will be pulling for lower rates to the northwest in Oakland County. Mark Hackle will be pulling for lower water rates to the northeast for his people in Macomb County. Detroit Mayor Duggan and Wayne County Executive Warren Evans will be pulling to the east to push for lower rates in Detroit. Can you see any real representation for Western Wayne County? Does anyone think that this piecemeal regionalized approach could possibly yield a fair and homogeneous water rate structure? Coupled with the fact that only Detroit herself has authority to set rates in Detroit, you can see that the Great Lakes Water Authority will be completely unable to set fair and homogeneous water rates. The mission of the Michigan Public Service Commission is to grow Michigan's economy and enhance the quality of life of its communities by assuring safe and reliable energy and telecommunication services at reasonable rates. Ironically, the MPSC controlled water rates for almost three decades from 1967 through 1995. In a recent conversation with former State Representative Rocky Raskowski, I learned that a series of backroom deals led to water being deregulated in 1995. Rocky served as a representative from 1997 through 2003 and has agreed to answer questions as to why the legislature deregulated water in 1995. He believes that water should in fact be regulated by the MPSC to ensure fair water rates. During the course of my research, I became aware of a major player in Michigan public utility policy, Dr. Janice Beecher. She has a PhD in political science from Northwestern University, teaches at Michigan State, is the director of the Institute of Public Utilities, and delivered a dissertation on public utility regulation for her PhD. In 2010, Dr. Beecher published a paper titled Water Pricing Primer for the Great Lakes Region. She stated that good policy should, quote, avoid excessive complexity, unquote. Cleveland, Grand Rapids, and Milwaukee have accomplished this benchmark. Detroit has not. She stated that overpricing suggests that the utility is providing transfer payments to another entity, including local governments, unquote. Can there be any doubt that the current Robin Hood approach to transferring wealth is being applied to communities in the Detroit region? Dr. Beecher further stated that, quote, protecting captive customers from the abuse of market power is the basis for water price regulation, unquote. The ultimate truth is that state provided water rate regulation is the only method that can possibly produce fair, homogeneous water rates in this natural monopoly. We have shown that the current rate structure as administered by the Detroit Water and Sewer Department is anything but fair. I also believe that it will be impossible for the Great Lakes Water Authority to provide a fair and homogeneous water rate structure. The leading, exp the leading experts agree that natural utilities such as water are a monopoly and must be regulated in order to attain fairness and transparency in water rates. My state representative Kurt Heise has reintroduced a series of bills on this subject. My state senator, Patrick Kolbeck, is also beginning to give this matter his attention. I therefore ask you to contact your state representative and your state senator and ask them to provide the proper legislation to return water rate regulation to the Michigan Public Service Commission as it had been for several decades prior to the last 20 years. I thank you for your time and attention.